Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, where I'm taking a look at the games that are ranked 10,000 and less on Board Game Geek, going through them and giving you some thoughts on them. Uh, sometimes I'll know stuff about the games, sometimes I'm learning about it the same time you are. So we take a look at 100 games each time, well, uh, some of 100 games anyway. So here we go, starting with 11,401, and that is, let's do nom the Nomads. The two Nomads? So this came out in 1994. This is kind of a, looks like a, an old, older war game, but a fantasy one. Oof, with a lot of writing on the counters there. There's not a ton of images here. Well, there's some. Can we get in closer at these? Okay. Yeah, this definitely has an older fantasy style look to it. Well, does it show the boards at all? Yeah, I get it. The guy is fighting off the dragon there. Okay, there's more pictures than I thought. Woo! That is a board and a half. Alrighty, well, that's an interesting one to start off with. Let's keep going. Here's one that... Um, Epoch Early Inventors, this one I'm surprised has not gotten more of a buzz because it came out from Real Grande Games, designed by Martin F. Martin F. is known for a Dutch designer who's done things Oklahoma Boomers. Limes is his most famous game, but also Cities. Both those games did pretty well. Um, and uh, this one seems to have gone under the radar. It has, you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of uh, Real Grande's covers, but that one looks pretty nice. Um, the board itself looks kind of interesting. I don't know a lot about it. There's a lot of pieces going on in this one. Um, yeah, it's gotten, I said, very little buzz um, at all. Yeah. Um, here's a line in the sand, a battle of Iraq. I point this one out because it got 206 ratings. This is a 1991 game, which seems like it came out while this stuff was going on. Whew. Are counters better, or are these stand-up, fold-it-in-half piece of paper better? I think counters are better. A very modern-esque thing. Oh, the stand-up stuff so you can't see what the other troops are. Yeah, I think blocks do a better job of that. All right, this one has 592 rankings. Stocks and Bonds, one of the most boring named games. This is from 3M series of games. You may not have heard of them, but they did a line called Bookshelf Games. This was back before Bookshelf Games was cool. Um, and the most famous being Acquire, of course. And this one here is Stocks and Bonds. This one I haven't played. I mean, Acquire is also Stocks, but whew. Well, you wanna play with calculators and time to get out and play these games? Yeah, well, this is probably a game from a lot of people's childhood. That's stocks and bonds. Uh, oh, catastrophes. Yeah. What is this, Slowo Story? That's got to be another language. Okay, I thought that was... I do like the art in that box, though. That's kind of cool. Little monsters, cute monsters. Looks like a game for kids, but is it? A card game finding the right words. You have two letters. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a party game. Looks like it's from Poland. I don't know that it's ever come out in English. Sushi War. All you can hit. All right, this came out in 2017. It's a party game. It's a creative calm with sushi ingredients. This has got quite a few ratings for me not having heard of it. It's not a war game. It's just Sushi War. People are just grabbing sushi as fast as they can. Oh, with chopsticks? Now well, that might be part of the appeal of the game. I would be really bad at it. All righty, moving on down. Bang Halo. So there's a version of Bang that's in the Halo universe, 2014. This is from the Op. Okay, well that makes sense. The Op has different versions. Huh, I know I wonder how well as you say, I was wondering how good this is, but I can see here that it didn't get a big buzz here. Well, it's another version of Bang. If you don't like the Western motif, you got Halo. 
Burning Rome, this, I reviewed this, looks like last year or the year before. Ah, uh, yes, this is a, a tactical two-player card game that I found to be very boring, unfortunately. Uh, it looked interesting, uh, the idea of cards having a backup number and a front number, and you put the numbers on top of each other, but my word, they use the same art for everything. It just felt very much like an obvious attack with this stuff. I was very not impressed with it. Here's Town of Salem, the card game. This one got almost 100 rankings here. That is the cutest Town of Salem artwork. That's the cutest hanged man I've ever seen. I guess that makes it less problematic. Um, all right, this is from Blank Media Games. It's an online game. Well, there you go. Got it started on Kickstarter. So it's like a werewolf variant type thing. Okay. This Blank Media Games, what else have they done? Oh, that's the only one. But hey, they have a map here. It shows you where they are. <laughs> all right, let's move on down here. Thought Wave. I got to take a look at this one from 1974. Because look at that. These people's thoughts are almost meeting. <laughs> What's the one guy doing? Is he about to spit? <laughs> I love that cover. <laughs> well, that cover's even worse. <laughs> it's probably an abstract strategy game where you're just trying to move these lines across the board and maybe make them... Yeah, that, that cover just cracks me up. The game might be fine. All right, when tigers fight, no one wins. Uh, there's a kid's game from Haba. Joker Marbles from 1970. I got to check out what a, a game called Joker Marbles does. Well, that board looks... It's a self-published board. You're moving around and not letting other people's tracks. So this is kind of fascinating. So there's the game. But there's a different game board. And a different one. And an even different one. That one's a hexagon. Now we're back to... No, oh, interesting looking. Joker marbles. All right, Tortilla de Patatas, the game. That's a very weird mixing of... Why is it the game? Why is that part in English? No, well, anyway. Make you're the best Spanish omelet cook. Well, that sounds good. It has some memory involved in it. <laughs> All right. Is she cheering for him to drop it? Or did she push him out of the way? So you got to get different ingredients to make an omelet. You'd think there'd be more omelet games, considering every hotel has an omelet station, right? Why isn't there more omelet games? Next time someone asks me, well, my favorite, uh, what, what genre there needs to be more? I'm going to say omelet making games. That's my new answer. Grackles. So Grackles is from um, Fireside Games, the same folks who made uh, tower, the, the tower defense game. Uh, Grackles is a very, 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 even though it's about uh, birds and putting them down, and it's, it's, it's very much an abstract strategy game. I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was great. But it's neat and has some neat pieces to it. Uh, fairy tale in my pocket. People just like to put the words in my pocket in games because that means it's small. I'm going to put a game called In My Purse. Fairy tale in my purse. Tavern's Tales. I think I feel like I've seen that game in my life before. Chosen X Core Escapes the Trap. Well, I got to take a look at that one, guys. Sorry. Oh, it's a war game. From Decision Games. Whew, that is a war game. With counters and blocks, and there's. There you go. Zombie Geddon. This original named game from Twilight Creations, El Reiner Knizia. That's really kind of a weird combo. Reiner Knizia is the king of abstract games. Twilight Creation is the king of, well, zombie games. They're the ones who make zombies. This came out in 2009. I wonder if this was re-released as another game at some point. Because if I know Dr. Kinezia, he did not... Oof, that's bad graphics. That is for sure. 
but his games do not have a good theme in them. Well, if you zoom up a little bit closer, it looks a little better. It's probably all numbers. Ooh, this game is super pretty. This came out in 2017. Let's just take a look at that cover. That's a really nice cover. I got to give them some props for that. Oh, the artwork on the board looks nice, too. Looks like you're making trees. Huh. I've not heard of this game. Did it come out in English? Draw cards. Hmm. I've not seen this one before, but I really like the art a lot. All right, moving down. Here's a game called Go Slash Stop. Sojourn. Opus Day Existence After Religion. Uh, it's an atheist theme game built on a world of philosophy. It's strategy. Uh, okay, an intellectual mind. 2008. I have not heard of this game before. Hmm. All right. Probably not a game I'm going to play, but... Let's see here. Then we have The Circle. Ooh, is this like a sci-fi movie? No. Oh, I remember this game uh, from C4 and Folker Jung. I remember being very interested in this one back in 2007, but I never uh, got a chance to play this one. Uh, the publisher, what else have they done? This is their only game. Ah, it's unfortunate because, I don't know, there's something about putting things around a circle that has me interested in them. And you put these different people here. Ah, uh, and move up tracks. I don't know, that just sounds fun. Uh, Victorian age, you're one secret agency protecting humanity against the circle's ultimate goal. Is it a co-op game? Huh. There's a few reviews of it, but not many. It's a much older game. The Circle. Avalanche and Crack an Alarm. We'll take a look at both of those. Aval Ooh, I want this game right now. You drop a marble in and it goes down different paths based on these switches and dials. That's cool. Oh, so they get stuck in them. But eventually, something tips it. And then they all fall like an avalanche. That's neat. This the I just want to play this now. That's cool. All right. And crack an alarm, which is also called CSOS Octopus from Philosophia Games. Oh, it has a ball that swings around and hits ships. Tether ball the game. It's a tilting mechanism, so it tilts around and then the ship gets caught by the Kraken. Okay, I like that. Definitely a kid's game. Alright, Meepile. Oh, I remember this one. This was essentially just a big meeple, and you stack little meeples on top of it. Definitely, this came out in 2008. Meeples were just becoming a thing to talk about, and so now there was a game called Meepile. The Battle of Red Cliffs, this is a, what kind of game with this? It, it's a revamped edition here of 10ZQ, the Mahjong card game. But I found this to be very boring, unfortunately. And I, I like, actually, I know Eric Burgess, the designer, so he's a nice guy. Um, but this game didn't do anything for me. It was just, I found it to be a really boring card game. Time Bomb, Battles and Leaders. Wow, talk about a boring title for a game. The Kingdoms of Crusaders. So this, the company that made this game here, Wright Games, you probably would know them better because they're the first company that made Evolution, which Northstar then bought, and Northstar remade the whole game. Evolution, their, their version of Evolution is very different than Wright Games. But this is another one they made, Kingdom of Crusaders, which was about playing cards that had different colors on them, trying to get different shields. It was very bland, unfortunately, and it wasn't as good as, as Evolution, which was the best game they did, I think. Tavern Fame. Oh, here's one I want to take a look at. Color Fox. Looks like a box of matches, doesn't it? 
Oh, they are. They're matchsticks of six different colors. When you co co when you multi collect the ones, you trade your matchsticks with an opponent, and you want to get different color matchsticks. I like that. So it's actually matchsticks and these cards. That's a cool looking game. Color Fox. Collapse. Hey, that's the name of my game when I was a kid. Oh, this is about the world collapsing. Ah, we'll skip that for now. Alright, Battles of the Ancient World. Wing 2. The game of extreme storytelling. Pirates, ninjas, robots, and zombies. There's actually two games. This is one of the games that came from rather dashing games. Um, the other one was Ghosts. I forget the other the other four ones were. Maybe it tells you down here. Mm, no. Anyway, I enjoyed this one a lot. Played it. I mean, uh, I got put it in context. I wouldn't want to play it with adults, but with kids, you're just trying to put down these tiles and make together whatever your group is um, and scoring to different groups. So a lot of fun, and it's also the name is silly fun. Um, Gem Hens. Ah, oh, this is a more recent game. This is from um, Gray Fox Games Kids Department, Social Sloth Games. This one I gave a 7 to. I would have probably even given it a higher one, but the uh, the component quality for this game was not the best. I mean, the, the box cover looks fantastic. Is this the only picture of this on the internet? Oh, folks, you can add pictures. I know this game's out there. Um, but the board was a little small. It's kind of like a Robo Rally where you have these these hands running around trying to collect gems and you want to get certain gems to score points. The concept's good, it just needed a bigger board. Yetisburg, Titanic Battles in History from a company called Titanic Games, which is why. Yetisburg is a pun and it's not the only pun. They, uh, we're gonna have another one called, uh, I forget what it was gonna be called, something about zombies. But this is just a two player, one versus one game and you had, you were essentially playing Civil War with different people from the Civil War and Yetis and putting them in a line and then just playing a tactical card game against the other person. It was not a bad game. You see, I ranked it a seven. I mean, I like I like humor, but if humor is there instead of a game, I'm not, I won't have any of it. And this one I thought was pretty well done. All right, moving down to, ooh, so here's a, a classic from 1970, Masterpiece. So I used to say, oh, time you call the classic, he rated it five, yes. But can anyone forget this cover? That's me. That's my hand. And those people are looking at me. And they're definitely not fake actors. It's the security guard that I always love in that picture. Because he's looking at you like, hmm. And then uh, that's where the people in the sitcom would laugh at that point. But this had different art pieces in it. And you put them around on little easels and you auctioned them off. And I thought that was fantastic. Had actual um, art in it until there's been a lot of great art games that have come out in the past years which have just crushed this one. There's a lot of luck and randomness in Masterpiece, but there's no denying it's a classic here. That is a lot of uh, people who've ranked this one. Star Wars Lightsaber Dueling. That sounds fun. West End Games. <laughs> sounds fun until you look here. Okay, Darth Vader. This is one way to take Something that's super fun and making it not interesting at all for me. Who's the company, West End Games? This is 1988. Oh, it's one of those book things there. I know in the comments someone's going to say, Tom, this game's fantastic. But yeah, that's a little, eh. Spectrangle here, 231 ratings from 1989. Ooh, that's a cool looking piece. Yeah, those look neat. I don't know if the game's any good or not, but the, I'm always attracted by colorful plastic pieces like this. They, they just look good. I wonder if that's a fun game or not. Lancelot here has 122 ratings. Oh, I've seen this one. It's from WizKids 2017. Mario Papini, he is Sienna and Feudo. Oh, my. Those are games, those bring back memories. Those are older games. He definitely likes his older, older uh, jive with his themes here. This one, I've not played this one. No! I have played this one. Never mind. 
that the name is a bit is a bit boring. Did Sam review this one? Yes, he did. I I had Sam review it because I did not like this one at all. You moved around the circle over and over and over again and picked things you wanted. Just I was like, Ooh. it seemed interesting, but I did not enjoy it. All right, Cthulhu in the house. This is essentially just basically uh, Rumble in the house, Rumble in the dungeon. This is another version, but this is uh, Cthulhu. You move your figures around inside a house, and you try to knock out the one that's not you. Simple, fast, fun. It works. Then we have Kenny G keeping it sexy. I'm actually surprised this one's so low. It's Kenny G, man. Uh, this is one of those games I keep in a dice tower library because I know someone's going to come by and be like, what? And this is a cooperative game, a very easy cooperative game, where you are keeping it sexy with Kenny G. And you, then you have to say the cards. There's doop, wada wada, scooty doo doo doo. Um. Trivial Pursuit DVD, The Lord of the Rings Trivial Trilogy Edition. Huh. Well, I, I would not want to play this with anyone. I wouldn't want to play with people who didn't like Lord of the Rings, because I'd hear about how they didn't like Lord of the Rings. And I wouldn't want to play with Lord of the Rings fanatics, because... Yeah! But some people would like it. Astoria. I've heard of Astoria before. It's two games in one. Oh, those are some pretty pieces. Well, of course, scattering gems all over the place. Hmm. I've not heard of that one. I think other than maybe in the background. Alrighty. Oh, Astro Trash. Oh, I played Astro Trash. This is another one I believe Sam Healy reviewed. Yes, he did. Um... You're just uh, getting rid of stuff. It's basically LCR. I was, uh, yeah, no. Um, has cool pieces. Cool pieces and kids will like it. Back to the Future and Adventure Through Time. This one I did play. This one I fully expected to like because I like Back to the Future. But it tried to do stuff with time stories and moving around. Uh, not time stories, but time travel. And moving around in time and changing things. And it was just really random. And unfortunately, I did not like it. it the theme was there, I guess, to some degree. But the gameplay was not. And finally, I always take a look at the last and the first. This is Jochen und der Monster. This is, oh, I know the designer. This is Marcel Andre. He did his most Taluva and Attica and Muterer, which is an influence on Citadels. So he's done some games in his time. Then this one here. When Juliet's home alone, the monsters awake and creep up from behind wardrobes and beds. What? With a flashlight and fly swatter, she sets out to defend herself. You can save Juliet or eat her. Oh, this sounds almost like an old maid style game. Oh, man, Juliet. So you win if you eat her? And those are some freaky deaky monsters coming after her. What kind of game is this? <laughs> All righty. Well, that's the last game that we're looking at today. We're halfway through the 11,000s now. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching 10,000 Below. Got comments and stuff? Mention them below. We'll see you next time.